I was talking to a couple of friends of mine a week ago, and they had moved their elderly mother into their home just as COVID-19 began. And so I was asking them, how is it going? And they told me that all was well now after they'd overcome a significant challenge. You see, their mother had a lifelong habit of pouring herself one ounce of sherry every afternoon. But now that she had dementia, she wasn't remembering if she'd had her glass of sherry, so she was regularly pouring herself a second and a third. And not wanting to argue with her or start counting drinks, my friends began to add water to the bottle with the hopes that she could partake and remain upright past 6 p.m. Watering down the sherry had an unintentional consequence. About a month ago, they noticed that she had stopped drinking entirely. And when they asked her about it, she smiled and she said, you know, I guess I just don't need it like I used to. By 1930, the Christian church in Germany had already begun watering down the gospel for years. And the people were using, losing their taste, desire, and need for it. When it came to preaching the Beatitudes, for example, Martin Niemöller recalls that there was this certain aura about them of distant horizons of heaven and dreams and poetry, unrelatable, and that the love of Jesus was something that was preached as postponed to another world after this life. And this watered-down version of the Beatitudes is, according to Philip Yancey, little more than sop that Jesus threw to the unfortunates, a heavenly reward for being on the bottom of life's heap. Interpreting the Beatitudes in this way as a reference solely to the afterlife has been one of the ways that the privileged and powerful have kept the suffering in their place of pain. From his jail cell, Martin Luther King Jr. wrote, For years now I have heard the word wait, and it rings in the ear of every Negro with a piercing familiarity. This wait always means never. For the gospel, for the gospel to be good news, it has to be good news for us all. Paul said, be not drunk with wine, but be filled up with the Spirit. So we must never water down the gospel out of our own discomfort. And the gospel, well, it should always get us a little buzzed. For Dietrich Bonhoeffer, a Nazi resistor in Germany during World War II, the Beatitudes were never ever a tool for placation or platitudes that had lost their salt. He interpreted them as states of being that Christians surrendered to if they wished to follow Christ. That meant that Christians, you and me, choose to be poor in spirit, mournful, meek, merciful, hungry for righteousness, and pure in heart. Coming to adulthood in Nazi Germany, Bonhoeffer saw the churches pledge their allegiance to Hitler, abandoning their Jewish, Romani, LGBTQ, and disabled siblings, and he questioned how many self-professed Christians actually knew what it meant to follow Christ. He saw that the church had watered down the gospel, and he knew that if people were not led by the power of the true gospel rooted in love, that they would be led by a power of the false gospels of wealth, prosperity, scapegoating, and power. And he warned the church of the need to rediscover the gospel. In 1934, when asked to preach something uncontroversial to a gathered church in Denmark, he elected to do the opposite. Instead, he challenged the churches to take a stand. There is no way to peace along the way of safety, he said. Peace is the great adventure, and it has to be dared. The way of Jesus is never safe, and it's always involved the cross. 
He saw too many Christians opting for security and comfort. And at the age of 39, Bonhoeffer carried his cross into a German prison where he was executed by the Nazis as a traitor. On All Saints Day, the ghost of Bonhoeffer reminds us that if we opt for comfort and safety, there can be no peace. That is true in a marriage or in a global crisis. We have to dare the adventure, take the risk of being vulnerable, move through the conflict if we are to find peace within ourselves and the world. And as we do, as we do, we discover that we are poor of spirit. And this for Bonhoeffer is not a bad thing. It is the blessed who are poor of spirit because they find humility. They know that they will one day be food for worms, but also children of the timeless one. And from that place of deep gratitude for life given freely by a God who loved us into being, they welcome God's will and they begin to join their life to Christ. And the awareness, the awareness of the sacredness takes Christians deep into the heart of that second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn. When we are vulnerable, we can't escape seeing the wounded self the wounded friend, the wounded world. And if we let ourselves, oh, we begin to mourn the suffering of it all. Bonhoeffer believed that those who mourn will refuse to be in harmony with the standards of the world. In tune instead with our own pain, we can find empathy for the neighbor who is hurting and who has hurt us. Blessed are the meek for they will be gentle with the world. They are nonviolent. And the nonviolent way of life is always other-centered. It's a life that understands that what we say and what we do has the power to hurt and heal, and we begin to choose to live with and for others. I saw this in the volunteers who ran the food bank this week here at Windermere. And the more we love, the more we yearn for a world where our siblings are as free as we are. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for justice. I see this in the Spaver family who yearns for Michael's homecoming. When we care about our neighbor's suffering and we are committed to nonviolence, then mercy is the response. Blessed are the merciful. The more we journey the road with Christ, the more we begin to see our lives as walking sermons. Walking sermons. Introspection, rather than judgment of others, leads us to discover the way our own heart is tainted by prejudices. And if we can lean into the practice of the sixth beatitude, we experience the blessing of a pure heart. And it isn't hard to see then how the pure heart becomes the ninth beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers. Nor is it difficult to see how behaving counterculturally will get you a target for persecution on your back. We saw that in Nazi Germany. We saw that in the civil rights lunch counter protests. We see it in the Black Lives Movement today. Russian mystic Seraphim once said, if you have inner peace, Thousands of people around you will be saved. A young black man sitting at the lunch counter protests in the 1960s was quoted in the Catholic worker newspaper saying, I will let them kick me and kick me until they have kicked all of the hatred out of themselves into my own body where I will transform it into love. Transform it into love. My friends, what would you give to be transformers of love? Because I have news to share. The gospel has not lost its potency. The spirit will not let you water it down. The beatitudes were made for you. They are 
powerful reminders of what it means to be Christian today. And when we take them up as a practice for this world, not as rewards for the next, we find ourselves open to the joy and pain of living, to the joy and pain of discipleship, to the joy and pain of being the body of Christ made to soak up the hate of the world and transform it into love. Thanks be to God for you and the God who dreamt you into being. Amen. Thank you.